Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Hallelujah. Well, glory to the King. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be here another day above the grave. Hallelujah. Most high, but Yahweh, we come to you this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, you, for our names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, having true salvation, a sound mind to be able to keep your commandments. We thank you for all this, Father. We count on many blessings today because you alone have given us everything that we've ever wished for and ever wanted in this world. Father, we need you in this daytime and hour to minister to our souls, our minds, and our spirits, Father, to bring about a complete, whole, perfect man. Help us to defeat the enemy here this day and hour. We'll use the power and authority you've given us and granted unto us to overcome all the power of wickedness. We thank you for this truth. Open up the ears to those you have ordained to eternal life. We'll bless your magnificent name in all things. I'm humbly asking that you will grant me utterance by the power of the Holy Spirit to minister your truth, that it will sink deep down into the ears of those that are hearing. In Jesus' magnificent name, hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. You may be seated, Israel. Well, that didn't work. I thought if I did that and cover up the mic, it wouldn't, wouldn't go through. I guess you just got to turn it off. Huh? Hallelujah. Do you ever do stuff and, and then you end up laughing at yourself and say, how stupid can you be? I try to minimize that, you know, over the, as you get older, you know what I mean? Uh, I guess it's better to rebuke yourself than to get rebuked then, isn't it? Hmm. I guess the real answer to that is, does it work though? Hallelujah. All right. Well, today we got a very interesting subject. We think we may have heard it before, but we ain't never heard it like this though. Um, we know that the book speaks about many, 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 many different things. But today we're going to deal with a diabolical spirit. Well, like I said before, we, thought, we think we've understood it, comprehended it. But I'm hoping today that the eyes of your understanding will be open. And remember, before we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we're wrestling against these principalities, these spiritual wickednesses up in high places, way up in the mind. Hallelujah. So you're going to pay attention today, all right? Not that you're not paying attention, but I'm telling you what, it'd be a, definitely a benefit. Glory to the King. So today I'm going to help us all out, every single one of us. I will use the help of the Holy Spirit which y'all has given unto us. Now we know that's fruit, right? And remember what the scripture says, by their what? Fruits you shall do what? How much of a fruit inspector have you become? Are you a pretty good one? Are you a pretty good fruit inspector? Do you inspect your own fruit too? Or do you inspect everybody else's fruit? Uh-oh. All right. Y'all know what that is, right? That's a wolf in sheep clothing. He sure does blend in good, too, don't he? Hmm? He needs a 308 right in between his eyes. <laughs> mm. Over the years... You know, I've, I've kind of sometimes blended these two together because sometimes they're mentioned together, you know, envy and jealousy. But they're, you know, they're really, truly two separate 
entities. I mean, because when you go to Strong's, you might as well just throw a thing in a trash can now because all it gives you is the, it gives you the, the profound, deep definition. And it says, ill will. Now, what are you going to do about that? How are you going to discern from the definition of what they're telling you what it is to bring this even farther so we'll know what we're up against? That's the whole purpose of preaching is for us to be able to know what we're up against. Are you following me? I mean, every preacher, they're, they're, they're swearing down that they're some intelligent people that they've got an inside track on y'all because when they're preaching and stuff, it, it seems like that they know everything. I'm one of the few honest preachers that tell you a lot of times when I'm preaching, I'm actually being ministered to as I preach to you. But what I do is, is I get up here and I act like that I've known this revelation all the time and then I look at you like this. Oh, never mind. I'm just telling the truth. Stuff didn't originate to me. It's Yah's truth. You know what I mean? Glory to the King. Now, over the years, if I've ministered before, it's done lodged into me. It's become part of me. You know what I mean? But you can tell when the spirit of truth or the spirit of revelation comes in because them, them little light bulbs go off inside those craniums that y'all have. Hallelujah. But everything that we're preaching about, teaching about, ministering about today is supposed to be for your perfection, your betterness, you to be able to overcome. See, to discern the Messiah's body, it first has to start at home with me, you. You understand? There's no good to discern everybody else and then um, we leave ourselves as if we've already been cleaned. Hmm? The word is designed to wash us by the washing of the water with the word. The word. So one time baptism, that's natural, but we're supposed to be cleaning. I'll say, I mean, how many times do people take a bath? You know, surely everybody don't take a bath only one time a week, do they? Is that how often you wash? I mean, if you ain't reading your word, you ain't been washed. If you're not hearing the word, you're not being washed. Uh-oh. I'm hoping, I'm just believing the Father that we're not throwing water up in the air and running away from it. We good, right? All right, good. Hallelujah. There's his friend, sidekick, kind of like Bonnie and Clyde. This spirit is so pervasive, meaning it exists to spread throughout every part of something, you know, like cancer does. Cancer's not content to just stay in one place. The whole intent for it to be there is to spread out and to accomplish the mission, which is death, right? Envy is a sin. It's also a sin that is less physical than other sins. You hear what I said? Said it's less physical than other sins. That means, give you an example here. See, many things we do, we have an awareness of it. So, if we steal from someone, see, that's a physical sin. You understand what I mean? You know that you've stolen from someone, right? So if we hate someone in our hearts, we're aware of it. But see, envy, it, fi it flies under the radar of perception. Sometimes it's so diabolical that it can insulate itself with heaviness. And you not even know it. And you're thinking you're dealing with heaviness, but you're really dealing with this spirit of envy. We'll get to all this. How you doing, Miguel? Envy is the type of evil spirit that hides and it lurks. It robs you of joy. So one of the attributes of this spirit is it actually robs you of joy. Now, what I had to do is I had to really comb through some stuff to come up with all this because I'm telling you, uh, Strong's as profound and deep as it is, I'd have been in trouble. Hmm? You can be envious of someone and not even know you're envious. It's become so much of a part of our life that we function like it in every, every single day that we don't even view it as a sin. 
in the so-called Catholic elder duh, catechism, 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 they call it one of the seven deadly sins. And that's something. To no envy, I'm just being funny with Elder Doug. Elder Doug is not a Catholic man. He, you know what I mean? So don't go back there and busting him up and asking for rosaries and stuff like that because he ain't passing none of that stuff out, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. To no envy, you've got to know the surrounding spirits that it runs with. In other words, it's got a gang that goes along with it. Now, this gang is very professional because this gang that runs with envy, it all exists to hide envy, to insulate envy. But envy is really the driving force of it all. You know, the book talks about things like be content with such things as you have. You get that? So if somebody else has something, you don't have it, you can't be content. Then I mean, there's envy working under there, underneath there. Envy is also best defined as covetousness. Yes, yes, Wanting to obtain something that's not yours. Hmm? And you can't be happy if somebody else has what you want, but you don't have it. That's why the book tells you to be content with those such things as you have. Because godliness with contentment is great gain. Is that right? Envy runs with bitterness, jealousy, pride, and the accusing of the brethren. Envy will insulate itself deep into your soul and your outlook on things can be greatly blurred. It can be so blinded. You can be so blinded to yourself to the point of your own reality or perspective of things are blurred. Envy is not as visible as other spirits because you can't just look at a person and say they're envious. But if you're discerning to the speech, the conversation that comes out of someone's mouth, you'll be able to hear the spirit of envy. But you have to be discerning. However, it does make you more miserable and it can take you down a long road. So what else mis envy will do? it make you miserable. I talked about it being heavy. Is that right? So you look at a glass of water right here. Some will say it's half empty. Some will say it's half full. Believe it or not, the perspective or whatever way you view this, it pretty much determines where you're at in your understanding spiritually. And it also charts your course in life and your outlook of things. You see, if you're the type of person that focuses on the glass being half empty rather than half full, your speech could go something like this. I may have this, but the other person has this. This will lead you into having sorrow for other person's good. In other words... And I may have this, but they have that. I mean, I, I, I like my car, but their car is better. That's just a kickstarting of it. Matters of the heart emotions, people struggle to identify. So envy. Wanting what someone else has. You ever wanted what someone else has? So nobody's never wanted what someone else has. The problem, ain't nothing wrong with seeing something and desiring, you know, and say, man, that's pretty nice right there. But when it goes to the point of it becoming painful or resentful, let's finish with the definition, awareness of an advantage of possession enjoyed by another and the desire to possess the same thing. So what the underlying problem with this spirit is, you see something that you would like that somebody else has, but you can't rejoice and be happy because they have it. So instead of being happy for the person, you're actually upset that the person has it and you don't. Uh-oh. Y'all hear me? This is envy right here. 
See, it'll be one thing to say, man, that's a nice car. I like that car, man. I'm happy for you. Then you'll be in agreement with your brother and you couldn't say that you're envious. But if, the, if he has something and, and you have a desire and you wanted to obtain it and you can't be happy for your brother or sister, that's where that spirit is and it comes out then. That's how you know you're dealing with envy then. See, then envy, they envy him for his success. To wish you had the same qualities, possessions, opportunities, etc. or somebody else. So don't you see sometimes that you'll, you'll see a person that you may admire and he has good qualities and traits about himself or herself. Nothing wrong with admiring that and then trying to advance yourself by learning from it. But when you are so-called, quote-unquote, hiding behind the cloak of maliciousness by saying that you are admiring someone and that admiring come, turns into jealousy or hate, Man, I really like that sister's. Man, that sister dress really looks good, the sister says, right? And then somebody else says, yeah, look at her. She thinks she's hot in it. She thinks she looks good, don't she? Ooh. That's that voice. You know, that critical spirit. Why can't you just be happy that the sister has a nice dress and she looks good in it? Is it the problem that you're not getting the attention and she is? And you hate the fact that somebody is outshining you for a moment. Uh-oh. See, this stuff flies on the radar. We hear speech like this all the time. We hear speech like this all the time. You know what I mean? When you see Pastor Muir and them and all the brothers up at Goshen, they'll find one of my garments, go buy it. Next thing you know, all of them are wearing it. And I'll walk in and go, what are y'all doing? Pastor Muir go, we look good, don't you? I say, you sure do. Y'all sure do, bro. Y'all look good. <laughs> see, that's when you know there is no envy in it. But y'all sisters got that stuff bad, though. In this congregation, a sister could have a pair of shoes. And another one not even think about it and buy the same pair of shoes. And you'll sit up and go, why in the hell did she get them damn shoes? Them my shoes, they're exclusively for me. And you will never wear those shoes again because somebody else <laughs> wore those shoes. Y'all tell me I'm lying. Uh-oh. Somebody say, I hate the devil. <laughs> that includes dress, the style of the head covering. I'm telling the truth, sisters. Brothers will walk up and go, man, that's nice, man. It would look better on me. <laughs> now, see, that's not envy. That's just the way brothers get down. <laughs> Are y'all getting this? All right. To envy him for a success. You know, somebody's very successful at doing something. Rather than you rejoicing over their success, you're very critical. Now, if you were successful, you want everybody to join on the bandwagon and praise. Uh-oh. But when you're envious of someone, all of a sudden you get mute and you ain't got nothing to say. Now, this way the Spirit also does it is like this. Well, I, you know, I know what they said and stuff, and, you know, it's just how they are. You know, it's just the way it's going to be. And such and such and so-and-so. And See, the Spirit is not happy that the other person is content, they're advancing, they're receiving the accolades, they're receiving the praise, because after all, we do have to praise somebody. It ain't only just praise the Lord. The Bible says don't let your own lips praise you, but let another man's lips praise you. So if everybody goes around and not giving thanks and not being happy for the success of your brother and sister, then that'd make for a bad environment, wouldn't it?
but you want the attention. Did I just hear a phone? I'm trying to come down for a second. Mm. I gotta get it's been a minute. It's, it, see the brothers are saying it's been a minute. It's been a minute, Pastor. It's been a minute. It's been a... Glory to the King. <laughs> Wish you had the same quality, possessions, opportunity as somebody else. Envy. I secretly envied her for her good looks. In other words, you know, a sister could walk in and people could admire beauty and other sisters could admire beauty. But again, the problem is she's getting the attention and you're not. She'll secretly become an enemy or you won't be as fond of her, even though she's done nothing to you. That spirit will put up a barrier and put up a wall, cut off fellowship. And if you had to say something that's so superficial, you know what I mean? That's really... No connection there, brother or sisterly connection. You understand what I mean? Uh oh, hold on, let me finish that. I envied him for his good looks. That's what TJ does with me. <laughs> but I tell him he'll be all right. That's all I say here, brother. Ain't no big. Here's a case of beer, man. You'll be all right. Though. DJ says, man, I, I, man, you inspire me. I, I hope I can look like you when I become old. <laughs> I envy you for having such a close family. I mean, if you never had a close family, it's been nothing but disarray and discord and dissension and argument and just, just dysfunctional and the environment is just chaos. And you see somebody else has a, a, one of them families like bro Scott. Y'all heard me on blog talk talking about his family, right? right? Now, if you could be mad at Brother Scott because his family knows how to behave when they come to his house, our house, and you know your family is just a shit show. If you could go up here and say, man, I'm happy for you, man, that your mother and father, man, they are just, they, they are just set the example. But you're all mad and upset because his family is getting all the accolades because they're just genuinely, just naturally good people. They're going to hell, but they're good people. And we don't say nothing about yours. As a matter of fact, we prefer if yours didn't even come around. You could get envious over something like that. You could have ill will towards him and he ain't did nothing but just exist. The father and mother, one who had him. <laughs> See, it'll take you a long way. Take you a long way. Jealousy, if you're jealous or feel threatened, protective, or fearful of losing one's position or situation or someone else. Jealousy, or if you are worried about someone else trying to take what you have. Jealousy and envy are enemies of our soul. They ain't our friend. They're not our pals. They're not our chums. They ain't no cousins to it either. They hate us. Emotions manifest in the body first, and then they communicate to the mind. So, see, this is how envy works. First thing you do is you feel a feeling. A lot of times when we're dealing with emotions, most of us don't spend time to try to figure out what emotion this is. We just usually just run on with it. We've been so accustomed... To rather than being led by the spirit to be led by emotions it's just been our standard operating procedure all our life even after conversion see when the book says work out your salvation with fear and trim that means you have to be actively involved you can't just be running around in life just passively existing if you feel one of those whammies or something like uh, you should, first thing you should do hold on stop the brake pop the brakes here for a second what's happening why am I feeling like this? What is this? And what is it trying to accomplish? Uh, see, that's what Satan don't want you to do. He don't want you to be sober-minded. He doesn't want that. 
He wants you to just continue to keep accepting life for the sorrow, the weariness, the heaviness, the being downtrodden and defeated because you're accustomed to it. Every once in a while, he'll open up the curtains, let the light and the sunshine come in, but just only for a moment. Then he's going to shut them back real again. It's kingdoms. It's all about kingdoms and who you serve. Hmm? So you feel a feeling. And you need to see what that feeling is trying to accomplish. Because you feel the feeling, but your soul has the voice. You have to go up here and go body, soul, and spirit again to get you to understand. Do we need a recap? Y'all listening, right? Mind you, I'm not y'all enemy. I'm the preacher here. If I was an enemy, I wouldn't be sitting up here trying to give you all this information to help deliver your soul. So if the devil say, and he gonna say this, you know he talking about you. The book says, agree with your adversary quickly. He holds the truth in unrighteousness, but he's not lying on that one. You can't find a place in the Bible that he ever lied. He's just the father of lies. Uh-oh. Did I just say something wrong, man? So if you believe I'm talking about you, yes, I am. Works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 said, and I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not accomplish the what? Lust of the flesh. For the spirit lusts against, for the, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are opposed to each other so that you do not do what you desire to do. This is coming from the scriptures version, okay? Uh-oh. But if you are led by the Ruach or the Spirit, you are not under Torah. Now, that's English translation. You get it? Because it, look, the phrase under Torah simply means you're not under the judgments or the penalties of the law. The, the, word, the, the word is not trying to deliver you from the law. How can, why would the word be existing to deliver you from righteousness? Don't David say in Psalms that our righteousness is an everlasting righteous and our law is the truth? So I got to say this because you're going to get some Christians that may be the first time they've heard this before. They read this. They use this verse a lot too. But if be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. We're not under the law. We're not under the law. We're not under the law. And if you're not under the law, then what are you under? You're under something. So the phrase under Torah simply means you're not under the judgments of the law. It does not mean that you're free from obeying it. Rather, if you obey it or you do not, well, that don't make any sense to me, my own self. You have to concern yourself with the consequences of disobeying it. So if you disobey the law, you got to discern, you, if, you know, you got to realize that the consequences are going to come. You're doing that right. See, the Torah works like the law of gravity. What goes up? Does it stay up or is it going to come down? And the works of the flesh are well known, which are these, adultery, whoring, uncleanliness, and indecency. Idolatry, drug sorcery, hatred, cause, jealousy, fits of rages, selfish ambitions, dissensions, and factions. Now, if you notice something about all of these, all of these you are completely aware of when they're taking place. Envy, you're not. Because it's done woven itself into our conversation. See, we're being critical and we're criticizing, but we're not being really critical and criticizing. Murders, drunkenness, and wild parties and alike, of which I forewarn you, even as I have said before, ill will. See, that's that envy, jealousy. You see what I'm talking about? That's the extensive definition that Strong's give you. You see how extensive that is, right? 
that those who practice such as these shall not inherit the kingdom or the reign of Elohim. So, we got to understand that even we're focusing on envy. If you don't get this about envy, you're not going to make it to the kingdom. That's how serious this thing is. See, all the other things we're aware of, you can't have that type of attitude and spirit and then expect to go tank God's kingdom with that. We have to be delivered. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Isn't that right? We have to be conformed to his image. But man, we really got to zero in on this envy spirit though. Huh? Exodus 20, 17 says, you do not desire the house of your neighbor. You do not desire the wife of your neighbor or his manservant. So in other words, whatever your neighbor has, you don't desire it. You know, covetousness, desireness, mean you're going to try to figure out a way to get what he has. People do that with houses, cars, wives, children. Yeah, they do. Man, humanity is something else. Or it's ox. Man, can you see that you over there looking at field? Especially if you got a sick ox. They got a good looking ox and they just have to be the same breed. You open up the fence and you trade out oxes. You know, that's against Torah too. Or his ass or anything which is your neighbor's. A man can envy his neighbor because of the work he accomplishes. In other words, you got a man that he's your neighbor. You see him constantly getting things done and you ain't getting nothing done. You can start feeling that ill will set in. And then that ill will will cause you to be very judgmental. Well, he's able to do that and stuff because you see that? That's envy. That's the voice of envy. Envy. You getting that? Or because, or because, you understand what I mean? Oh, hallelujah. This stuff is diabolical, man. Ecclesiastes 4.4 4 says, again, I considered all travail and every right work that for this a man is envied of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation of the spirit. So the amplified version, which will bring you home to make it more sense to you, will say, I have seen that every effort in labor, every effort in what? Every effort in labor and every skill in work comes from man's rivalry with his neighbor. Can you imagine being envious at someone because they produce more than you do? Can you imagine being secretly upset at someone because they seem to be prospering more than you are? Maybe if you tried working a little bit, you could probably prosper too. Uh-oh. Instead of making excuses, if you get off your do nothing and do something, you could probably prosper too. Uh-oh. Y'all seen that video I did, right? We know that there are poison in our foods. Your food. That's why I can't watch too many videos, man. If I watch too many of them, man, it will mess with my mind. You know, I, I, I know I got a set apart mind. But if, if, I, if I didn't hear what I had to say, I probably would agree with him. They are poison in our foods. They are messing us up in our educational system. Ain't the way I see it. Hallelujah. This too is vanity, fluity, false pride, and chasing after the wind. If a man folds his hands, i.e. he refuses to work, he only ruins himself. Everybody can agree with that, right? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, love, charity, what does it do? It suffereth long. Who would ever thought if you love somebody, you suffer? Every morning I wake up, I see Mother Carol, I got to suffer. See, and that, see, if I don't clean up, somebody's going to have some ill will 
and they're going to be against me because of what I said. She know I'm joking, but you don't. And you're going to take it. Why did he have to say that? Never mind. Well, hallelujah. Love suffer long and is kind. Now, how many of you love like that? That you suffer or you endure and then you still be kind while doing it. For the most part, most of us will just go ahead and walk in the flesh and then we'll repent later. Uh oh, you know I'm telling the truth, but you can't be like that. Charity, love, envieth not. Hmm? I remember that during the feast day, so I told you, it got wind, got, it got wind, I got wind of, it got back to me that somebody had drove down and they seen that Mercedes parked right out in front of my little garage. Well, whose car is that? Is that the pastor's car? Well, look at there. Why does he have one of them? Probably because I work. It's funny what a hunk of iron with an emblem on it would do. Y'all ain't never seen how people just lose their mind over an a, a emblem? Mind you, they didn't tell you it was a 2010. It, that don't matter. It's just a fact it's a Mercedes. So when I tell it to you, and if you got that garbage into you, in you too, it'll take root. See, because the book teaches, you be careful, lest there be found any of you any root of bitterness. See, somebody just got finished talking to you negatively, and it's just everyday speech to you, because you're so used to hearing it. You didn't disavow it. You didn't cancel it out. You mean to tell me, y'all ain't never been on the cell phone and somebody's talking and it also so negative, you get finished, you ain't never hung on the phone and says, you know what, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I don't receive none of that in the name of Jesus. I ain't let none of that enter into my spirit. None of that is coming into my temple. Well, if you ain't never did it, you better start doing it. That's how you keep yourself unspotted from the flesh. What, Pastor? Now, I didn't know we had to do all this. Wake up! Where you at? Well, I was here. No, you ain't. <laughs> what world are you living in? Oh, boy. Y'all bought you from darkness to the light. Uh-oh. Instead of, it could have been this. Man, that's a nice car. He deserves it. Uh-oh. See what I mean? Uh, it's the craziest thing. It's the cra I remember I had this old 1995 um, uh, Ford pickup truck, right? Nobody ever came and said, why is that old truck parked in his driveway in front of the garage? <laughs> Nobody ever said nothing about it. Why ain't nobody envying that truck? I can do a hell of a lot more with that truck than I can with that car. Somebody say that envy is pretty much laced in covetousness, which is idolatry. Uh oh. See, this thing's pretty slick and deep, isn't it? It really is. But charity envieth not. Love envieth not. If you love me, you wouldn't envy. If you love your brother, you wouldn't envy him. If you love your sister, you wouldn't envy them. Yes, sir. If you're going to find fault with someone, have a solution when you find it. Just don't leave them hanging. 
Don't go tell somebody about themselves and you ain't got nothing good or a solution to be able to help them in the end. I'm trying to teach y'all how to walk in love. Charity vaunt of not itself. It is not puffed up. Y'all don't remember hearing, what's that guy named Rob? When he did his little rebuttal, rebuttal show over the show that I did, you could tell he was all butt hurt and everything else, right? I actually picked up the phone and called him too. Had a good conversation with him. Still did the interview. Yeah, I said, no, nah, you keep doing what you're doing. I understand where you at, but you don't understand where I'm at. Uh-oh. But I still told him about himself. Because I'm walking in love. Ah, oh, never mind. Never mind. One of the things he took issue with was because when I said, well, I do this and I can do that and I can do this and I can do that. And he said, what is he doing? What is that? I'm going to get to that a little bit later too and I'll show you the reason why. See, it ain't never bragging when it's something you can do. Uh-oh. I mean, I, I know for a fact I'm the best preacher in the world. Yeah. That I know for sure. I can preach in any platform, any church. I can go to the hoop church and hoop with the best of them. Y'all want to see me hoop? <laughs> <laughs> they say, no, 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 get back to the message. <laughs> uh, works of pride. First Timothy 6 1. Now, as many servants that are under the yoke, and that's supposed to be a word now like count their own masters. It should be a count in there, right? Anyway, as many servants that are under the yoke, count their own masters worthy of all honor. Let them reckon that the name of Yah and the teaching may not be evil spoken of. It's a different translation, right? And those having believing masters, if you have believing leaders, let them not despise them or slight them because they are what? Don't forget they're still brethren. They just hold a position. But rather let them serve because and then of course King James says but rather do them service because they are steadfast and beloved now see look it's defining for you what believing leaders believing masters their character the way they should be see most people think that they exist to receive all kind of praises and accolades just because they're old or just because they have a position but you can't just be going out there throwing out a car blunk all these accolades on people that don't deserve it. Because you're going to be setting them up. Because usually a person that's been successful or, is, or, or being successful, you're not going to tell them nothing that's going to puff them up. Because before you can go up, if it's going to be righteous, you had to be a base first. Uh-oh. See, when I, when I go visit other communities and stuff, sometimes I, I get the best treatment. I get a room with a pee bucket. Can you imagine T.D. Jakes going to get in a room with a pee bucket? Or Joe Osteen? What would they do? First thing they would do is start trying to call room service. They ain't no, the only room service your shoe leather. But you see what people's mindset is? They're too good to pee in a bucket. And of course, I'll be thinking, well, damn, it's five degrees outside. Would you rather pee in that bucket or go pee on a tree? All of a sudden, the bucket looking pretty good now, isn't it? See, if you would just be content no matter what state you find yourself in, if you would just be content... Rather than always having something negative to say about everything. Just negative Nancy, negative Adam. 
I'm going to grumble, 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 grumble. Make no difference where I go. I mean, after all, I'm pastored out, man. I'm supposed to be having the, I'm supposed to be having the best given to me. Because y'all have seen my lifestyle over a period of 25 years. Y'all seen me toil in this vineyard in this labor, right? That to me, it don't make no difference. I can still sit in that bucket. I can pee in that bucket. I can sit in that bucket. The bucket don't bother me none because what's coming out of me don't care where it's going. The only thing that's going to hit is that perfume behind of your pride. You too good. You too good for what? Uh Uh-oh. See what I'm talking about? But see, if you've had those experiences, you know how to do with little. And when you get a lot, you know how to do with a lot. Most of you ain't never lived your life without air conditioning. Unless you was walking from the car to the house. It's almost sacrilegious to live in the south in the summertime with no air conditioning. We did that for like nine or ten years here. Our AC was box fans. You know, at one time in Walmart, them, them box fans used to cost every bit of $12. $12 for a box fan. Nobody complained. You know why? Because nobody wasn't going to get no AC. So we used to complain it. Everybody thanked the father that we had a box fan. Right. Some of you can't fathom trying to exist with a box fan. Now, remember what I said on Patreon, right? We need to make some commands in this, in, this, in this ministry right here to make sure that some of y'all sisters get out there in that creek and wash all summer yes. with a good old-fashioned bucket and washboard. So that way when you go push that button, you'll be saying, thank you, Jesus. The blessings of the Lord are rich, and they add no sorrow. And then, of course, they say, yeah, it sounds good, but I ain't getting out there. If you're living on straightway, you'll be out there. Because all of you that ain't never been out there in that creek, you're going to be in that creek this summer. You're going to get the old baptism that all these old hoary-headed women got. So you'll learn how to not murmur. You'll learn how not complain. You'll learn how to, no matter what state, you well, I ain't getting out of You ain't going to be here then. We got time for your sport brat foolishness. That's why I said grandmama and great grandmama and great granddaddy and all that, they know how to keep a family together. They didn't even have electricity. They didn't complain. Well, we got it. You ain't paying for it. Uh oh. <laughs> Did, you see what I'm doing, right? How do you think that the Messiah could go to the tree? If he had all that stuff in him, and he took all the iniquity and all the sin of the world up on his shoulders, he would have complained every step of the way. But because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame. And that's the type of attitude that we're going to have to live by on a daily basis. And let's just go on in a minute. We ain't there yet. We better get there. Uh Uh-oh. And no matter what state you find yourself in, be content. Uh-oh. We learn anything? What happened? And then it says, look at this. <clears throat> because they are steadfast and beloved, talking about the leaders, right? Steadfast, meaning they're consistent. They're constant. They're sure. They're the same. They're solid. Steadfast. And beloved, who of the benefit are partaking? These things be teaching and exhorting. If anyone be teaching 
otherwise and do not consent to sound words, those words of our master Jesus the Messiah, and to the teaching according to piety, he's what? If you can't even teach this, you're proud. You don't know nothing. You doubt about with questions and words striving out of which doeth come with what? Isn't that amazing? So look what proceedeth envy in here. Doubting about with questions. I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. How do you have a question when it's so, so cut and dry? Brother, go pick that broom up. Um, I got a question. What's your question? What broom? There's only one broom there, brother. Uh, what do you want me to do with this broom? Are you serious? You mean I tell you to go pick up the broom and we're out here working and you don't know what you need to do with the broom? Brother, go over there and sweep. Sweep where? Wherever there's damn dirt! <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, you know you deal with saints like here. Especially you people in communities in Olmstead. I know it's crazy. I know you people that don't live on communities in Olmstead. You can't believe it. But you wouldn't believe some of the stuff we got to deal with with humanity. I gave you a living example of the way some people are. No! Wait till you get on one. <laughs> and word striving, out of which doeth come with envy, strife, evil speakings, and evil surmisings, wranglings of men, wholly corrupt in mind, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain or piety to be gained, depart from such. Zeal, in some context, is also pride which works conflict. Unbelievers of reprobate mind, even as they did not like to retain Yah in their knowledge, Yah gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not what? Being filled, a reprobate mind being filled, a reprobate mind is being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, Covetous, maliciousness, and full of. So let's rehash this for a second. Rather than slanting or slighting the success that your brother or sister could be having or the good, the good that they're doing, be happy for them rather than sad. That way you know you're not dealing with an envious spirit. That's the Cliff Notes version. And if you some way, somehow find your spirit rising up in anger because you got some resentment building up in them because of their success. Oh, there's their spirit. There's their spirit. Uh-oh. Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignant, and whispers. Love. Big word, isn't it? Love or charity works like this. I am happy when you're happy. And I am sad when you're sad. Y'all hear that, brother and sister? When you happy, I'm happy. When you sad, I'll be sad with you. Uh-oh. But envy works like this. I'm sad when you're happy. Did y'all hear that? That's how envy works. Can you imagine going around and seeing someone happy and then you get sad because they're happy? You get fired up and you're full of malice and hatred and, and you're just wicked as hell. You're like, what the? What right do they have to be happy? Look at them. Need to find out what's saying looking at them. I'm sad when you're happy, and I'm happy when you're sad. Is that not wicked? Have you ever seen this before? Also, it ain't nothing new then. We're very familiar with this then. Is that the reason why I'm so quiet in here? Is that the reason why I'm so quiet in here? There 
there's nothing you can have in life that envy will not rob the joy of it. Envy will always try to nitpick to get to a place that it will suck the joy out of anything that you get happiness of in life. And most of you use people. I mean, like, anybody here like cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory? Raise your hand you like cheesecake. Now, all the rest of you don't like cheesecake, don't be envious. Just be happy that we do. That's more for us. Don't sit up and criticize us. Well, I think we ought to get it from Walmart. We ain't at Walmart. We're at Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> You'll be the type of person we'll be taking you along in the car. Say, anybody want cheesecake? Good, we'll go to the Cheesecake Factory and you'll be pissed off the whole ride. Because we didn't get it from Walmart. And you got to ask yourself, what kind of person of you that's going to eat cheesecake from Walmart over the Cheesecake Factory? What's really going on? I don't think that Walmart had nothing to do with it. I think you just mad. You ain't got nothing else better to do but just be mad to bring about a cancerous environment because they happy and you mad that they happy. They glad and you upset that they glad. Now if we stop at your place and we forgo our place, all of a sudden you happy and you don't give a damn if nobody happy or sad. <laughs> Anybody ever dealt with this stuff before? We, uh, Grown children. You know, that was an example, right? So, to envy another person is miserable and it causes heaviness. So, if the spirit of heaviness come on, you know that that spirit of heaviness got its motivation from somewhere. It got its motivation from somewhere. Think about that. So, Ecclesiastes 38, 18 says... For the heaviness, for of heaviness come of death. Don't heaviness feel like death? And the heaviness of the heart breaketh strength. Wait. I mean, you've seen people envious before, right? You just didn't know how to put it, what they're doing. You didn't have the spirit to discern exactly what's really going on. But you just know something's off. So since there's something off, you being righteous, you just blame yourself. It's got to be me. It's something with me. I'm off. No, you're probably on. They're probably off. See, if you were off, you would know because you would be critical of them and if they're happy, you will be sad. If they're sad, you'll be happy. So that's how you know you're not blame shifting. You just know that there's something there. You just don't know how to articulate it. You will never be content at what you have or what Yah has done for you because you always have a negative answer or a negative response for everything. Example. You may win the lottery, and you may say, yep, but look at all that taxes I had to pay. What do you give a damn? You didn't have nothing. What do you care? See, you can't win for losing. You can't, you could take something that's full of joy, supposed to bring you some happiness, money answers the whole thing, you get your answer, and you're concerned about the, the government getting taxes. You could have opted out of that and, and wait for an extended amount of years. But now you just got to complain about something. 
and such and such and so and it still has uh, uh, and then you get the money and then all of a sudden it'll come up in your mind I got all this money well I can't be happy because they still got more money than I do believe it or not this is real stuff people get upset when somebody possess more than they do Man, you've got a nice piece of property. This is an example, okay? You got a nice piece of property here. Yeah, but he has a nicer one than I, and it's bigger, and he could do more. You got five acres, your neighbor got ten acres. You ain't you can't be content, you mad and upset. He got more space and more room than you do. Somebody just commended you for having a nice piece of property. You couldn't just say thank you. You couldn't be appreciative. See, we're going to get to a major word that we all need in this life. We need to really practice it and implement it in our lives so that change can come about. We're going to get to a word. You really look beautiful today. Thank you. But did you see Nellie's dress? I just can't afford anything like that. Now, somebody's trying to compliment you about how good you look today, but because you're full of envy, did you see Nellie's dress? I can't afford nothing like that. What does that got to do with somebody telling you how good you look today? What is in your spirit? What's wrong with you? What is going on for real? We ain't talking about Nellie's dress. I'm trying to tell you you look pretty damn good today. Is that all right? Well, I tell you what the hell with you. You look like shit. How about that? Hope you feel better. <laughs> Mother Carol really looks good. She's 56 and looks really good for her age. Yes, but she lives at a place that has a gym or she has time to work out. Oh, I don't want to be that size. Why can't you just agree that Mother Carol look good for 56 years old? Why do you got to go around all? through all that just where you at all I said she just looks good well she she got a gym whoever says you need a gym to look good how about you just move Never mind mother that's putting the work in and is going to the gym five to six days a week. Don't worry about that. We ain't going to capitalize on that. An envious person always has excuses and a reason why they can't accomplish things. Y'all hear this? An envious person focuses on what someone else has and compares it to what they do not have. That makes for a bad environment around Israelites. Y'all hear me? Man, did you see that brother Brett 
Man, you see that fish brought a Brent call. Woo-wee. Yeah, watch this. You see that there he got? Yeah, if I had time, I could catch more fish than he does. But when you have time, you're thinking that you're not thinking about fishing or hunting, you're thinking about foolishness and leisure. <laughs> you're not even thinking about it. Why don't you just rejoice that the brother got a fish, man? What do you got to do? Oh, I can do it better. Show us. Don't talk about it. Show me. Uh Uh-oh. That brother McNair and that Elder Mitchell, they be bringing in the food. Man, they be bringing in the food. You can't be happy. They bringing in the food. So, you ain't going to say nothing because you're starving. See, I can do that too. What well, that, we'll be waiting. Then show us. How about watching your conversation again? How about watching your conversation so that others do not get bit by your negativity? Oh, see, have y'all figured it out that whenever a person is envious, they're always critical of the righteous. The criticals are the ones who are getting things done. Uh Uh-oh. You can't be happy at another person's success, but you have become a professional excuse maker and a criticizer. The truth is, You ain't about to do a damn thing. You can't even rejoice over them because you're mad and upset, but you ain't out there to do what they're doing. See, it's a spirit. It's a cancer spirit. Man, straightway is getting it done. Yeah, they just showing off. That look like we showing off. Where can we go to show off like this? We was in the city, they probably called the cops on us. Looking like that. How is that showing off? If that's showing off, come show off with us. (laughs) That ain't showing off, brother. That's the five, six guys. Most of y'all didn't watch the video then, did you? Yeah. Man, I hate to even take a, a consensus and say who watched it. They don't even know what I'm talking about. Few people do. I ain't going to tell you either. So how's that showing off being in that mud pit? We bring, I always bring my son up so I can keep him around building stuff. You know why? Because we don't want to raise no effeminate boys. You know what I mean. He likes cement trucks, dump trucks, and monster trucks. and He so much loves them things that even Josiah, when the, brother, the, brother, the little baby can't do nothing. He'll go park a, a semen truck by his head and then leave. <laughs> isn't that that's funny, isn't it? Little Jonathan in the sky. Yeah, every time we get a building or something, we get them up there or get them around it or do something, even just to be there. So they get accustomed to being around men. Uh oh. See, doing something. 
How about we're trying to inspire others and motivate them so that they can see that they can do the same thing? So rather than saying we're showing off, how about just using us and saying, you know what they're really doing? They're really just trying to inspire and motivate to show you that you can do the same thing. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? Why would you criticize somebody for doing a good work? You understand what I mean? Hallelujah. Y'all seen my video I put on Patreon, right? About leaders supposed to be able to make sure that young men have the motivation and the inspiration to be inspired to actually grow. But they got to see it from their leader first. Yeah, the men in this community is different because I made them different. <laughs> Ask every one of them. Are they better now as men or were they better then when they came? And you know what they're all going to do? They're going to be better men than I ever have been. And they're going to be better fathers than I've ever been. And they're going to rear and raise better children than I've ever had. Uh-oh. You got to learn something from somewhere. Y'all see Bro Scott, he got them two warriors right there, boy. Got them out there hunting deer, shooting guns and everything. They love it too. They was dragging them to you. Scott had them two little warriors out there dragging that deer up out of the, out of the field. What that Charles that said, hold on, Dad, is his head going to come off? He had them. Uh, 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 uh. They were loving it too, wasn't they? See, you want your children to play Xbox and PlayStation. And then you'll get mad at them because his children can actually forge for themselves and forge a living. they got skills. They've learned how to hunt at a very young age because their father's pouring into them. And your children the same age, and the only thing they can do is get the high score on Call of Duty. And then you get mad when Pastor Dow gets up here and brags on this father for training up a child in the way it should go. And I'm not saying nothing about your child because the best thing they can do is get calluses on their hand for having a joystick in their hand playing Xbox and PlayStation. <laughs> wasting damn time. What is the dad really doing? Is he just giving them food? Or is he teaching them how to get their own food? What's the best way to do with anybody? Just give it to them for free? Or, or I teach them so they can go get it for themselves? Uh-oh. And that's the problem with a lot of you out there. On the other side of this camera, whatever camera I'm on, and in here, you're so used to everybody in, in giving you every damn thing, you, you come with an entitled mentality. So then when everybody does give you something, you can't even say thank you. I'm all over this spirit, ain't I? Should I give you a fish or teach you to fish? Well, good, teach them fish, Brick. Go ahead, Brent, teach them how to fish. See what I mean? Because when it comes time to survive, the ones that know how to fish, they'll be able to live. How in the hell can you envy somebody like that unless you got a foul spirit? Don't be mad. I see young, young men, young fathers around here. Now, now that the old pastor's having children and stuff, again, I see them watching my example. And I say, look at that. They pouring into them children. Brother, brother, brother Victor does it all the time. He pours, he paid, paid, man, he gets around his son, man, teaches him, walks around with him, corrects him, and all kinds of stuff, man. Hey, look at him. Got him blowing a shofar. I was like, man, I'm glad to be an inspiration. Well, man, I don't know, maybe I'm just putting myself up on a pedestal. Did I inspire you any, Brother Victor? Just a little bit? You're just saying it because everybody here is the right moment, right? You know, it's one of these getting to know you moments. You know, one of these hallmark moments, footstep, footprints in the sand. I do inspire, okay. <laughs> okay. 
So how, did, why, how could you get mad and upset over somebody like that? When you're seeing people advancing, be happy for them. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Huh? Don't sit up and tell me, well, well he's catching them fish because he's in a boat. Brother Brent, how many times do you catch some rock fish on the side of the bank without a boat? Huh? Just as many times. Just as many. Now what you got to say? See, when all your excuses is gone away, then what? What's left is you and that wicked spirit. That's what's left, and that's what needs to be dealt with. Because if you don't deal with that spirit and you let this speech come out of your body, come out of your mind, come out of your mouth, which comes from your heart, it's going to go out and defile many. Because they're going to be troubled at that speech and you're going to defile them. Uh-oh. James 3.13, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show. Let him show. Let him, in other words, as an action, something's got to be done. Let him show by his what? Good behavior, his works, what? In meekness of what? Wisdom. Brother Bud, when he first got here, man, he thought he was still out there at the construction site. He was cussing brothers out and every damn thing. I said, behold, bro, you can't be doing that shit. These are Israelites. These are y'all's people, man. You didn't cheat. You ain't, this ain't the foreman out there on, on the Bucks, North Tennessee. He gets honed in. Now he's in the spirit to teach. Teach the brothers and stuff. If they really mess up wrong, he's still going to get it, though. But it's just a different spirit now. Bud is actually becoming a person you actually want to be around. He's a person you didn't want shit to do with. Oh, boy. So who is wise among you? I'm not saying he wise either because he ain't I'm that. He ain't that. I'm that. <laughs> so who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by his good behavior. So it's something that has to be seen. His works with meekness of wisdom. That man right there. You didn't think I was going to put me in there? I know I'm a wise man. Sometimes a wise guy. Ain't that right, TJ? <laughs> Look at that man right there. I thought I would get a little bit more applause than that, man. I was, I was, I was trying, you know what I mean? I just, not anyway. Fruit, by their what? Fruits, you shall know them. James 3.14 says, but if you have bitter jealousy and self, somebody say it. So what's really the underlying mold is also running with envy is what? Selfishness, self-seeking. There's something in there inside of you deep down that really desires what somebody else has but you ain't willing to put in the work uh oh but if you have bitter and jealousy and self seeking in your hearts do not boast against a lie against the truth this is not the wisdom coming down from above but it is earthly Unscript, unspiritual and demonic so now it's letting you know that this type of spirit is coming out of you this thing is, is straight up devilish for where jealousy and self seeking are there is confusion in every foul deed you know King James says for where there's envy and jealousy self seeking are there so what's really thing I want the praise. I want the accolades. I want the attention. I. Me. I. (laughs) 
There's confusion in every foul deed. But the wisdom which from above is first clean, then peaceable, gentle, ready to obey, filled with compassion, and what's that word? Filled with what? Filled with what? See, when I tell you, you come look at me, you're going you're gonna to get a basket full of good fruit. There's not one rotten fruit in my basket. <laughs> Except these pants keep falling down. It must have happened when I was running, so I must have took the elasticity out of them or something. And without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Are you a peacemaker? Are you a peacemaker, Israel? That's what we want to know. Are you a peacemaker or are you he that sowed discord among the brethren? You know one of those things that y'all, hey, see, you go to Proverbs 6, 16 real quick. Let's find out what y'all says. Oh, see, I was trying my best to stay on point, man, because we'll be bouncing all over this. When you have it, go ahead and read. These six things does Yah hate. He loves them. Hate. He has a fetish with them. Hate. He admires you for it. Hate. He longs to see everybody be like this. Hate. He hates. What does he hate? Yeah. Seven are abomination unto him. Now don't y'all care about what y'all hate? I care about what y'all hate. So I want to know what y'all hate so I can do the very opposite. Hallelujah. Read. A proud look. Ooh. And what else? A lying tongue. No, you don't just got to have proud. You just got to have a prideful look. Just look prideful. And a lying tongue. What else? And hands that shed innocent blood. You know, heart. You know they, they talk like that back then because they used to kill folks all over the place. We civilized today. So the renewed covenant got that covered too. You got hate in your heart towards your brother. So you thought you was getting by, didn't you? He hates when you hate your brother. He hates putting forth the finger. He hate he oh well, I'm telling you, y'all hate some stuff, man. Read on. A heart that devises wicked imagination. That just sits back and just figures out how and imagine how to accomplish wickedness to get over. To take advantage of. Read on. Feet that be swift and running to mischief. Boy, that's, that's man, man, that, that sounds like that gossip and slander spirit, don't it? Read on. A false witness. Or what kind of witness? False. Or what kind of witness? False. You ain't even there, but yet you believe it. Somebody says something about somebody, and you weren't even there. And there was no witnesses to verify, but you choose to believe. Man, that's a false witness. The book says, out of the mouth of two or more witnesses shall every word be established. Man, I get false witness about all the time. All the time I do. All you got to do is just come and ask me. I got an open door policy. Come and ask me. If somebody said I said something, come and ask me. I'll let you know. Read on. A false witness that speaks lies. A false witness that speaks lies. And he, uh-oh, that sows discord. Where? Among brethren. So y'all hates this. Y'all hates this. So now we know what y'all hates. We can do the very opposite and we'll be walking in love. Hallelujah. The Garden of Eden. You know, the champions of monogamy. The Garden of Eden is the place where envy started way back then. See, they wasn't content. Adam and Eve, you know, Satan told Eve, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I heard what he said. Mm-hmm. 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 You're sitting up here in this paradise. That's what you're doing. But you ain't y'all. You're sitting up here in this paradise, but you don't know what y'all knows. 
But I tell you what. Take this fruit right here. He knows the day that you eat it, your eyes are going to be open. You'll know what he knows. You'll be like y'all. What? So they bitter the fruit of lies. And envy from the serpent, from Satan himself, caused them to rebel against Yah. Plunge us all into the condition we're in today. Thank y'all for Jesus. See, even in the most perfect place, even in the most perfect place, envy can turn paradise into a living hell. You can have good communities, good homes, and let envy in, it will tear up everything. It will destroy everything. Perfect place. Hebrews 13, 5 says, let your conversation, let your conversation, let your conversation, let your conversation be without covetousness. Can you talk without coveting everybody, everything that everybody else got? Can you, can you have a speech like that? Can you speak about something other than just coveting whatever your brother has or your sister has? See, it wouldn't be covenants if you always complimenting them. Now, if they ain't got nothing to compliment, don't make up nothing. Ain't no need to add no jelly. Hallelujah. Ain't no need to add no jelly. Your shoes ugly, they ugly. I'm not going to tell you they look good to make you feel better. No, I think they ugly. Well, you hurt my feelings. Your feelings ain't got nothing to do with your shoes being ugly. You ain't got to sit there and be offended. Let your conversation be without covenants and be content with such things as you have. For as he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. See, you can always say, I don't have this or I don't have that or we are not. You can always say this. My personal opinion about this wicked spirit is how to be delivered of it starts with drum roll. Boom, 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 boom. All right, anybody want to be delivered of it? Anybody want to be delivered of it? Let's see what's behind door number one. Anybody want door number one or door nothing? How to be delivered of envy. It comes with one word and that word is drum roll. Gratitude. <laughs> you want to have an attitude, have an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. Man, I wonder what kind of environment that would break. Man. See, focus on the blessings Yah has given you in your life. Rather than focusing on what you don't have. Rather than focusing on what you don't have. See, I mean, James says it, you desire and you have not. Why? Because you're going to assume it on your own lust. It has to do with envy. So rewire your brain. You're not going to obtain everything in the world you ever want. He said, I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. He know what you have need of before you even ask. He's all I need. Get me started. <laughs> so the giver that gives every good thing that comes from above, focus on the blessings of Yah that He's giving you in your life. I mean, warnings to you women from the scriptures. Y'all want to hear? Y'all got to hear this, right? Like as a whore, envy is a right, honest, and virtuous woman. Uh-oh. So shall righteousness hate iniquity. See, these are two different kingdoms operating right here. You think that you, because you are a whore and you envy the righteous, the righteous despise and hate you just as much. 
the righteous hate iniquity. When she decketh herself and she and shall accuse her to her face, when he cometh, that shall defend him that diligently searcheth out every sin upon the earth. 26.5 There be three things that my heart feareth, and for a fourth I was so afraid. The slander of a city, the gathering together of an unruly multitude, a false accusation, and these are worse than death. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman, is a woman that is jealous over another woman, and a scourge of the tongue which communicateth with all. Please ask the 3710. Consult not with one that suspect of thee. And hide your counsel from such as envy thee. If you know somebody envy you, you better start keeping your mouth shut. You better start keeping your mouth shut. Please ask the 3711. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. If y'all know when somebody is jealous, man, don't, don't be having no conversation, no long outdrawn conversation. You better put some distance in that conversation in that place right there. Neither with a coward in matters of war. Now, if you're going to go talk with war, why would you, you gonna talk about war? Why would you want to bring a coward and sit down and counsel him on matters of war? What is he going to tell you? He's a coward. He can't give you no wisdom. Isn't that right? Nor a merchant concerning exchange. Because you know he's a shyster. nor with a buyer of selling, nor with an envious man of thankfulness, nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness, nor with a slothful of any work. Why would you want to consult somebody who's lazy as hell about doing some work and getting something done? It ain't going to happen. It just simply ain't going to happen. Nor with an idle servant of much business, so you got a servant that all they're doing is like sitting on their hands. But you're going to try to get some wisdom from him on how to conduct business. That's nonsense because it don't, it don't make any sense at all. Hearken not unto these in any matter of counsel. Now, after 25 years of laboring in Yah's ministry, myself and the brother are finally building my house. See that little house over there? 25 years! See, what people don't see, I'm probably going to get to it. See, I've always put y'all's people before myself. I've always, I have a record of, of you can see the track record that I've always put y'all's people before myself. Always. I've always put the work of the ministry before myself and my family. When I say myself, it means my family included. You know, in case y'all didn't figure it out, I just want to leave no stone unturned. So. I can go back to YouTube. I mean, you can go back to YouTube and watch the 6,500 videos I posted over the years and see the fruit of my life and doings. Also, I need for someone to commit to downloading those 6,500 videos on YouTube because they can wipe them out anytime they want. Somebody get on it. Bless y'all. We'll send you an offer. And let me know who's doing it too. I thank the Father for the provisions and the Israelites who have literally put their hand to help me build this home. And it ain't finished. Y'all has blessed me with beautiful help meets to help me in this work. I've labored more than all and some think that I'm actually arrogant for saying this. That's why I was talking about earlier with Rob. If I haven't labored more than all, somebody tell me I haven't. That's my beautiful help me that God has added to me to make sure I can get this work done. <laughs> if Paul says it, it's okay that I've labored more than they all. Nobody says nothing about it. Isn't that right? I mean, you may have been doing a lot of work in all your life, but you ain't done the majority of your life to work for the kingdom. I didn't say you didn't work. You had to get here some way. 
But Paul, so if Paul says it's okay, but if I say it and it's true, why isn't it just a fact? My enemies will always hate the work, so I will rejoice. I'm always going to rejoice. You get it? 1 Corinthians 15, 10, he says, but by the grace of Yah, I am what I am, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but look what he says, but I labored more abundantly than they all. See, I got plenty of brothers and sisters in this vineyard with me that's laboring, laboring equally with me in this work. My more abundantly goes into ministering, preaching, and teaching. There ain't nobody in this ministry ministers, preaches, and teaches and works more than I do. Zero. They're not even close. That's my lot. Does that make any sense? That's just where he put me at. So I say that so I can antagonize all the other people. You know what I mean? Psalm 73 is beautiful. I think I'm missing something too. So remember what we had said earlier. Thank y'all for all the blessings that he's given you. Thank y'all for the blessing of eternal life. Thank y'all for the blessing. Your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Thank y'all for the blessing that you got health. Thank y'all for the blessing you are clothed and then you're in your right mind. Hmm? Thank y'all you got a roof over your head. Thank y'all you got clothes on your feet. Shoes on your feet and clothes on your back. Thank y'all you got food in your mouth. Thank y'all he is providing all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Thank God that he's giving your brothers and sisters as better than your own natural family. Hallelujah. Rather than focusing on all the negativity of an envious person or an envious person, focus on that. Thank God for blessings. Hallelujah. Psalm 73, David had a concern, and this is what I call the envy chapter. And I got it from the amplified version. Listen to what it says. A psalm of Asaph, truly Yah is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet came close to stumbling. My steps had almost slipped. See, what David was doing, he was looking out and seeing the wicked prosper. And he began to get an envious eye towards them, even though he's the king of Israel. Because he wanted to see Israel, the people, and him prosper well above all these evil, wicked people. And he began to get envious, so he wrote about it. He had something to learn. He learned something. Maybe we can learn something from him. For I was envious of the arrogant. As I saw the prosperity of the wicked... For there are no pains in their death. Their body is fat and pampered. They are not in trouble as other men. Every time I read this, the only person I think about is that wicked ass Joe Biden. I can't stand that man. And he ain't done nothing to me. Let me move on. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Isn't it crazy how it seems like that the wicked, man, everything in life is at ease for them. They get everything they want. They eat. They get fat. They even go to the grave in peace. They live long lives. Therefore, pride is their necklace. Violence cover them like a garment, like a long, luxurious robe. Their eye bulges from fatness. They have more than their heart's desire. Their imaginations of their mind run riot with foolishness. They mock and wickedly speak of oppression. They speak lofty with malice. 
They set their mouths against the heavens and their tongues swaggers through, a, out, through the earth. Therefore, his people return to this place and waters of abundance offered by the irrelevant and blindly drunken by them. They say, how does Yah know? Is there knowledge of us with the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who always prosper and are at ease. In the world, they have increased in wealth. Surely then, in vain, I have cleansed my heart and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long, I have been stricken and punished every morning. If I had said, I will say this and express my feelings, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. When I considered how to understand this, it was too great of an effort for me and too painful until I came into the sanctuary of Yah. Then I understood, for I considered their end. Surely you set the wicked minded and immoral on slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. How they are destroyed in a moment. They are completely swept away by sudden terrors. Like a dream which seems real until one awakens. O oh, Yahweh, when stirred, you observe the wicked. You will despise their image. <clears throat> when my heart was embattered I, and I was pierced within as the fang of an antler, then I was senseless and arrogant. I mean, ignorant, excuse me. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you and you have taken a hold of my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me to honor and glory whom I have in heaven but you. And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail, but Yah is the rock of my strength, of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you will perish. Joe Biden. You have destroyed all those who are unfaithful and have abandoned you. But as for me, it is good for me to draw near to Yah. I have made the Yahweh Elohim my refuge and place my trust in him that I may tell of all your works. See, Israel, have gratitude. Be grateful for what you do have. Focus on what Yah has already done. If you wake up each day and count your blessings, envy will be a defeated foe. Just count them. See, that's why I get that from. I couldn't help it. I had to jump the gun. You remember, I had, I'm blessed because I'm a child of the king. Counting blessings. My name is written down. I'm blessed because he has performed his word in my life. I'm blessed because he has given me all that I have. He's provided for me and my family. I'm blessed because he has given me children. I'm blessed because he has given me lands and homes and brothers and sisters. I'm blessed because I cannot count all the blessings he has given me. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now I'm going to tell you right now, that damn spirit of envy, boy, it hate me. God, I, I, we just got finished ripping the cover of the cover of the cover of the cover off of the cover of envy. So now we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. We know exactly the voice of envy. We know how it creeps how it walks, how it sounds, how it talks, how it reasons, how it rationalizes. Ain't y'all glad? Yeah. Don't have to be deceived no more. Ain't y'all good? All right, 2.30 is going to be dinner, okay? 
Thank y'all good. Did y'all enjoy that message now? It wasn't that bad, huh? Did y'all learn anything? Y'all should have learned something, right? Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable when I sight. Oh, y'all, my strength and my redeemer. It is missing the magnificent, beautiful, holy, set apart name of Yahshua the Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Shabbat Shalom, Israel the King is coming. Look at him looking.